I'm so spun out on this video. I just want to watch it nonstop. It's the biggest ramp I've ever seen. But see, it's like, like the one that he did at Macaroni's, it's out of the Look bowl. Look how tweaked it is. His board's like, <laughs> his board's like, <laughs> crawl, it's, it's the most boned out thing ever. He's going crazy, man. He's done like two of the biggest punts anyone's done this year. He was this close then, like, if his board angled and he got like the transition down and rode out of that, it would have been the biggest air anyone's ever done. Holy shit, I'm spun out on watching that clip then. Is he the best surfer in the world? Yeah, he's going nuts. I'm telling you, he's going fucking ballistic. And he's 45. <laughs> oh. All right, well, we've got to start the show. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pickup, Stab and Vans weekly show covering the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing and all the other Hawaiian happenings of the winter. My name is Danny Johnson and I'm joined here in our Byron Bay studio over 4,720 something miles from Hawaii. We're in Byron Bay. We've got Holly Warren, Harry Bryant, and that's why we're in the clouds because we're upside down. I don't know if you guys have ever really understood the concept of this uh, studio. I get it. We're yeah. on the other side of the... Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And the surf in Hawaii has been non-stop. It's been these huge period swells, just back to back, one after the other. What's the energy like on the rock when it's like this? Oh, I'm running for the bloody hills, personally. Yeah. It's so entertaining just being on the shore and watching though, because the waves break so close to the beach. The whole corny saying of like feeling the vibrations, it's actually a it's actually real. Like you can sit on the beach and the whole sand's like vibrating when the waves are crashing down. So mm. no matter That's where what the you beach are, boys are talking about. Yeah, exactly. The beach yeah, the be <laughs> <laughs> The Beach Boys actually wrote a song about that. Yeah. I think. yeah. yeah. Right. And what's been some of the most impressive things you've seen so far? Definitely the Colapinto brothers at Haleiwa. Back to back. Who do you reckon got the uh, upper hand on that exchange? I actually think Crosby. Yeah? Young Buck. Yeah. Coming through. I thought the same thing. He was looking pretty good. Yeah, there's actually five sets of siblings competing this year. The Hoes, the Florences, the Smiths, the Monies, and the Color Pinto brothers. And if Coco and Mason won the men's and the women's, they'd be the only brother-sister duo to do it. And I've got one more bit of trivia about siblings in the Triple Crown, and I wanted to do a little bit of a quiz. Who are the only siblings that have ever won the Triple Crown? The Hoes. All right, well there goes my quiz, far out. You did that in about 0.4 seconds though. Of course they're the only ones that have done it because they, they've been ruling the Triple Crown and these Hawaiian contests since they started. They're the best. The wave that Derek went out in, I, it's so marked in my brain, that full layback, the late drop to layback, it was like, a full drop the mic of like how to surf, ways with consequence, pipeline with style and finesse. And to do that still at that age and then drop the mic, leave the earth on that mm. note, pretty special thing. Mm. And I think the hoes in uh, for years have always set the benchmark in surfing for the love of it and complete happiness. They surf as a family. When I watch them surf, I feel like I'm a pretty happy guy, but I watch them surf and I'm like, oh, I'm actually depressed in comparison to how like, yeah. much yeah. fun they're having. Like, yeah. they're just, it's just pure enjoyment. And yeah. it's, so, uh, it's so good to see. And yeah, tragically lost Eric, so rest in peace. Speaking of Hawaiian legends, this week, our Hawaiian correspondent, Nathan Fletcher, went to pick up some boards from one of the biggest legends Hawaiian surfing has ever seen, Mr. Al Chapman. Al, originally from California, relocated to Hawaii's North Shore, where he would go on to become one of the early pioneers of big wave antics 
and one of surfing's most respected shapers. He's one of surfing's most mythic figures and he hasn't done an interview for over 12 years. So let's see what happens when Nathan paid a visit to his bay. We came over to um, Third Stone Glass and Surf Shop and these guys are gonna buy, I think it's a 7.6 Al Chapman. Do you guys like that? The board's gonna be for the Triple Crown for those spots for people to go try it. Does that look worth it? Do you think people would like to ride that at the uh, premier spots in the world? Basically to ride an alternative board design at those spots. Precision. And that's the name of the game, isn't it? A special board that people get to ride and it's in honor of just the history of big wave surfing. A surfer who excels in big waves, the stylish Owl Chapman, aboard his 12-foot Rhino Chaser, the longest board in the contest. There waves in that, but this here is a uh, state-of-the-art hot dog, you know? If you got that attitude, you might be able to really ride the shit out of some big waves, right? That's right. People want to get a cu uh, custom board from Al Chapman. What do they do and how do they do it? Just walk, knock on the door and hand me the money. What's the verdict with this thing, Al? Where is it ready for? Sunset, pipeline. Both. Both. Hall Eva? Can we get a Hall Eva in there? But hopefully, some of these triple crown dudes come down and um, sample out the rail, the down rail. Not a lot of, like a lot of people are sitting wide, so you can probably get one. Yeah. For sure. Break it pretty far out, so it gives you a chance to get one. Huh? Hey, how big a board are you riding? 6'6. Six, six. Perfect. Oh shit, am I gonna actually ride this thing? Oh, this thing feels like a blade. Probably gonna paddle super good against the current, so hopefully beat the crowd. How big is this? 76? We're on. Maybe we'll beat the crowd on this thing once. This thing was insane this year. It was so fun. It paddled like a beast. And it was a living legend's board. I was stoked to ride it. This thing's so hard to turn. It's almost too thick, but once you're on a wave, it's like, just wants to go on one line. It just wants to get barreled pretty much. That's what it says. It's hard to turn. Definitely one of the hardest boards I ever tried to turn in my life, so. You see that one close that I pulled into? That was sick, dude. This thing went right into that. The paddle is pretty much the same as my 9 l so I'd rather ride this, but this wave is really hard to really get up and down, especially with a board this big. You need a, like a 6.2, 6.3, you know, you need kind of a shorter board, but yeah, it's just getting bigger, so it's probably going to be better. Good stuff. Funny though, at the time that those boards first came onto the scene, it was such a pivotal time, like that was the shortboard revolution completely no one had seen a board that short before because like the traditional hawaiian gun was in like the nine foot six range and it just goes to show how far surfboard design has come because i think now your your standard pipe gun i could pretty much ask anyone in the water on a give any given pumping pipeline day i reckon 90 percent of the people in the water are riding a six six come mm. and it's just kept coming further and further down. Like, how was John John's bomb at Halle Eva the other day? He was on a 6.0. Yeah. Like, that thing was monstrous. Yeah, it was how a huge How did you even get wave. into it? I don't know. Like, there's so much water out there. Billy Kemper described that session as heavier than Jaws. There's so much water moving and so much chaos. And he's out there on a 6.0. Yeah. 
Dude, that turn was so big that John John did. That was like the second day of the year. I, on the second day of the year, I felt so bloated <laughs> and sluggish and cloudy. <laughs> like I was scared to go and surf my local beach break and John John's going out there doing the biggest turn anyone's ever done mm. on, a, on a 6 -o short board when it's like eight to 10 foot Hully Eva. You got sucked out in the rip at Hully Eva on a 6 -o. Like I'd want Mikey Wright swimming after me in like <laughs> instantly, <laughs> instantly. <laughs> Haliva's a, uh, it's a special wave because in my opinion, it's its one of the most high performance big waves there is. So it's just super rippable. It's not like Sunset where it's just like a big pain field. It's like hard to find the wave. It's just kind of right there and, and you can lay into some of the best turns of your life. And I think obviously John, John's wave was pretty insane. You know, I think that um, that first turn was just as good as, as good as a turn you could do out there. For me, when I watch him come off the bottom, I think it all just starts with his super deep bottom turn. And then when he gets to the top, he's just really laying it all out there. And I think part of it is he's worked on his equipment so much with, with John Pizel. But yeah, he, his whole rel is in the water and and it never looks like he's gonna slide out. That was a 6'2 ghost. He's 6'1", six six more. Okay. Like his, but his, his normal ghost would be a 6'0". It'd be smaller than him. He's always ridden boards that are too small for him. And so I would like sneak a little bit, you know, I'd, instead of a 5.7, it would be a 5.8 with 5.7 written on it or something, you know? And he always was like, no, this thing's too long or whatever. He always, he always liked a smaller board. And then that design in particular, the way it's built is that it has, the wide point is slightly forward of center. And then going up into the nose, it's pretty wide still, not really wide, but it has a fuller outline. And so what that does is that creates a longer boards like the, the outline of the board is like it is a longer board. It has a more parallel outline. It's funny, that whole wave isn't like super phenomenal. It's kind of a, like he has a little mid section of that that's not that good. But, um, but that turn, it was funny because you don't see him and then he comes up into view and then just goes through that turn and that's just like, that's like John's turn. And then he gets that good barrel right after that. If you watch it, how he engages his rail and just goes through like this, I don't know how far that arc went, but it was just so nice and smooth and there's no like, no, no hiccups in it. And then as he comes off the bottom again, he just keeps all his speed. It doesn't like bog down. So this looks like he's, he's got it figured out. <laughs> So John John's waves, probably one of the best waves we've seen surf so far in the Triple Crown, but there's actually a lot of entries that have been disqualified. There's a bunch of rules, surfers haven't been reading the rules, they've been uploading waves too late, and they're, they're getting disqualified left and right. Nobody listens to Turtle, but don't worry you delinquent surfers. If your waves got DQ'd due to an unpunctual upload, you're not screwed yet. Here's what you need to do. Get a friend to stand on the water's edge and film any two waves of yours at Sunset, Haleiwa, and Pipe. They can literally be one footers. Once you get those clips, go home and immediately upload them to the Vans Triple Crown digital platform. You can then swap them out for the waves that had been DQ'd and now they will be considered legitimate contenders. Speaking of contenders, can we talk about Gabriel Medina's great escape? Rather than slum it out in Hawaii for the holidays, Gabe and his girlfriend Yasmin Brunette decided to flee to Mexico for Christmas and New Year's. Anyone who's followed Gabriel on Instagram for the past few years knows that New Year's is his favorite holiday. He typically spends the night surrounding himself with 40 or so scantily clad women and smiling wryly as the night goes from 6 to midnight. This year though, Medina was flaunting a different kind of kitty, or at least a more singular one. We're not sure how this drastic lifestyle change is going to impact Medina's title chances, but if Pipe is any indication, his libido is far from lost. Speaking of world titles, we're starting to get a little worried about our pal Italo Ferreira. It's been two weeks since he suffered a head and rib injury at Pipeline, and we haven't seen the flying bleach ad since. Italo was one of the first surfers signed up for the Digital Vans Triple Crown, and based on his previous output rate, we expect him to have like 20 entries by now. Word on Kamehameha is that Italo flew back to Brazil and has been laying low on account of the injuries. But if we've learned anything about this guy, it's that you can never count him out. Italo's probably gonna arrive back in Hawaii on the last day of the Triple Crown window, rush over to the North Shore, paddle out in a pair of jorts and on a borrowed board, and get two waves at Haleiwa, Sunset, and Pipe and win the whole thing. 
On the female side so far, Steph's been a clear leader, as has Zoe McDougall. Steph's got the experience, Zoe's a local. It really seems like, you know, spending time on the North Shore is what counts. For sure. I think uh, Zoe's approach is really good. She's got, I think, an entry from every location. Yeah. Which is really strong because I think Zoe capitalising on the smaller conditions the other day at Backdoor and getting that nice little pit mm. was really good. Yeah. Mm. It's the Vans Triple Crown Digital Edition. It's, it's a whole new level of strategy and gamesmanship and... <laughs> Breaking news, stop the presses, we have a developing situation in Hawaii. Remember in the first pickup episode when we said that Moana was the girl to beat at Pipe, but that Tati could potentially usurp her with the help of blocking from Ross Williams? Well, that entirely fabricated rivalry has somehow come to fruition. Today at Pipeline, Tati positively scorched Moana on a late afternoon left. Moana was furious about this and proceeded to follow Tati up the beach, attempted to slap her twice, and then berated her in front of a bustling beach crowd. I think you can guess what she's saying here. We've spoken to both of the women after the incident. Tati says that she never saw Moana and has apologized profusely to no avail. She also denied the notion that Ross regularly blocks for her and says that she's had to fight for every good wave she's gotten at Pipe. Moana said that she doesn't care about Tati's apology because it doesn't address the core of the problem being safety at Pipeline. She went on to call Tati a hazard out there and then called her a bunch of bad names. It's safe to say the Pipeline portion of the women's triple crown is heating up. So, are you team Moana or Tati? And one of the most impressive entrants on the female side is Bronte McCauley, who has never been to the North Shore before and has somehow just been charging. And we all know she's used to just pulling into giant slabs, but she's taken that as a North Shore rookie and has just has got some amazing submissions. She's really quite experienced in, that sort of, in those sorts of conditions, a lot of water moving, and her backhand is also phenomenal. So I think we could really see her take out Haleva and Sunset because mm. I just think her hooks under the lip are going to be better than anything anyone can do. Uh, my name is Bronte McCauley, I'm 27 and I'm from Greystown, Western Australia. Yeah, first time on the North Shore. I feel like there's been like a lot of swell um, most days, so I feel like every surf's it's like a bit of a challenge in a way because um, it's just like a lot of paddling and sweep and yeah, I mean it does feel a bit like Western Australia in terms of um, just pretty raw and just, you know, you just kind of like in the elements a lot and um, Haleva's been pretty sweepy so that's been a bit of a challenge but there's been some pretty good days out there and then sunset I've like already snapped a few boards and got caught inside and just trying to just learn about the wave really it's um it's pretty tricky it's kind of challenged more which is which is pretty good for most of us just to get out of our comfort zone. We had a few sessions at Haleva so I've got one one or two clips from there and then I think we'll try to get some sunset clips next. Um, and then I guess pipe last, because it'll probably be the hardest to get a clip. <laughs> I don't know. I've never surfed pipe, but I feel like you need the most time maybe just to get one good one. Our kittens this week are Stab's very own Ashton and Mikey C. Morella, who, if you remember from last week, actually entered the Vans Triple Crown and they're having their own competition against each other inside the competition, some sort of like inception type situation. And yet, neither of them have submitted a decent wave yet. It's a really piss weak effort from the boys. Yeah. They have they paddled out? Have we got confirmation of a lift off? Well, Mikey's claiming that he's got this one wave from sun Sunset on a Surfline replay. Yeah, but, but it's all a blur. Yeah, it could be anyone. <laughs> could be any natural footer surfing sunset that Yeah, day. I mean, just anyone with their shirt off could be, you know, uh, misinterpreted as Mikey. Until the Surfline cam has some sort of facial recognition, <laughs> Mikey's entry does not count. Yeah, it can't count. It could have been any little... Little shirtless man, <laughs> natural footer man. It did, it did make the wave look pretty big. Yeah, it was actually a, only a three footer that way. <laughs> <laughs> and our first line this week is Kiala Kennelly. She's a big wave world champion and she's well known for charging like an absolute maniac around the place. 
But how she clearly didn't watch your pig dogging tutorial from the first episode because she's she's gone for the double grab here. Oh really? Yeah. Double grab, tube ride. Can't say I've ever heard of it before. Mm. Did it pay off? Did it work? In well, her no, she got munched. But there you go. Uh, and our second line this week is Mikey Wright for his heroic rescue on the North Shore. This sure is the shore break that we've seen a million times. It's the thick, heavy ones that Clark Little takes photos of that are these thumping lips right on the shore. It's, it's the way that Jamie O surfs on soft tops sometimes. And it's almost never surfed other than those novelty sessions because it's, it's just not even really a wave. It's just a really scary shore dump. And it's, it's just lucky that Mikey and Tyler happen to be staying there because otherwise there would have been no surfers around and it could have been, it could have been a disaster. This thing has set the world on fire. It's on Ellen. He's all over every news network. It's BBC, the New York Times, like global huge news celebrating this human life mm. being saved. A lot of hysteria. Um, you know, that stuff happens a lot. I think it was amazing and heroic what Mikey did. Pretty over the hysteria, to be completely honest. You're not feeling the celebration of this? Yeah, I think, I think the pepper around it needs to simmer a little bit. Maybe there isn't much else going on in the world right now. I just don't like hysteria around things and global hype and like viral things. I don't like when things go viral when they happen every day. But professional media is important. Media is media. Someone, I can't defend the media. I've got someone who can, who's someone who is from the professional media. Do we? I'm not cut out for this. Rondog, you're in. You know that scene in Anchorman when Ron Burgundy's drinking milk? Yeah. That's where I'm at in life at the moment. <laughs> Just come out of employment, been in a glass cage of emotion, haven't worked for a year. <laughs> milk was a bad choice. But yeah, I, I, can't, I can't back what you guys are pushing here. Mikey Wright is a, he's a national treasure. He's an international hero now. Yeah. And he's got a mullet. It was crazy though. Let's dive into exactly what happened though, because if not for Mikey, that poor woman was cooked. She yeah, was she, toast. Yeah, she was cooked. What we, did happen, Ronnie? Well, uh, I've spoken to the man. You know, I've been keeping uh, abreast of the situation. I think the most interesting thing is what Mikey's not being picked apart for is he was initially about to enjoy the misfortune of a tourist being washed across the rocks. That is a great watch. <laughs> Which is something he's not being blasted for. Yeah, because exactly. that's... Yeah. That's how the footage started. Yeah, he did look We've pretty comfy. There. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're all on the lookout for kook slams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what he was doing. Yeah. He was going, watch this person. Yeah. They're about to get abs... They're going to be one of those people that you see on kook slams at Shark's Cove. Yeah. The water exploding and then them just getting completely grated yeah. across what are probably some of the sharpest rocks on the North Shore. Yeah. Right there. And so he's filming and then the situation goes from kind of comical to to cereal next level hectic no he's getting s hey he's gonna get need to get saved talk shanae shanae hold this shanae 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 hold this you can't save me It's more the um, hysteria around viral sensation thing and like, I saw people like reposting the video that were nowhere near Hawaii. Yeah. I just hate when people post things and it's like viral and it's like, you just saved someone's life, you just did this. I bet you in any given day, no matter what the waves are doing, surfers who are out in the water who spend a lot of time in the ocean and are comfortable in the water, we pull surfers up or swimmers who have been caught in a rip all the time. 
actually, uh, when I was chatting to Mikey, he, he was talking to me because it is, you know, you, you're the accidental hero. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. it's sort of something he doesn't want to be opportunistic. He's not trying to make something from it. But yeah. I just said, mate, you don't have a choice yeah. when I spoke to him. Nah. It's like Mick getting like in the tangle with a shark. It's like, yeah. whether you like it or not, this thing is going mental. Yeah, exactly. This is part of your story now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Embrace it. For sure. Because you have no choice either way. Yeah, I agree. So I was like, get on, Ellen. Do what you do. <laughs> yeah. You know, flick the mullet Trim around. that mullet up. Yeah. You know, I salute him. Yeah. I think it's pretty awesome. I, I salute. Uh, yeah. You know, he missed out on that, that wild card opportunity yet in the last two weeks. So I, or from a North Shore season, yeah. he's the biggest story now yeah. of the entire year. You know, as far as mainstream media is concerned, he's, yeah. it's more important than the Pipe Masters. If... Leonardo got swept off the rocks at Sharks Cove and Mikey Wright was there watching. Would he potentially have let him get sucked out in the rip to never be seen again <laughs> and then scoop up that wildcard opportunity? Yeah, Holly? well, uh, now that we're going back to just novelty banter, I'm going to throw it back to Danny Johnson, but thanks for having me. Let's cut now to local surfer, Shaden Picaro, who's been ripping so far on the Triple Crown. He's a working class charger that fits in surfs amongst time working in his surf school and as well as looking after his new family. When I was young, before I even started surfing, I was like all into motocross and like did this jump and then boom, busted my two tooth and I was only like 12 years old. I'm supposed to go to the dentist and like, get an appointment but the waves are good and right now is the period of the triple crown and I'm like uh uh I'm surfing like do it this later you know people are like what happened you got into a fight yeah man a few guys jumped on me <laughs> my name is Shaden Kaulana Dela Cruz Pocaro I'm 23 years old and I grew up on the big island of Hawaii on the east side in a little town that we call Puna. I grew up surfing Pohoiki a few years ago, maybe three years I think. The lava erupted and covered all the surf breaks and, and it makes me like being a dad. I'm like, oh, I wish I could take my son back. Losing all of that back history growing up, it was a sad time for everyone. My wife, Danielle Zerk, and I, we just got a, a new child. His name is Imua. He's heavy. He's really heavy. He's like 17 pounds now. We're gonna embrace this child and, you know, like, we're all in. I told her we're all in. Imua, we move forward. Look. As a, as, as a young person becoming a parent, we work together as a team and we realize that it's going to be harder, but it just means it's time to work even harder. He's amazing already, and he inspires me every day. Like, I've been lucky enough, I have my wife, Danielle, and she's a trooper. You know, she's a mommy, and she's breastfeeding, and we're on the beach, and she's filming at the same time, and they film together, and I come in, I'm like, oh, babe, like, you're crazy. He was so good that day, I was just like, we, we just went to check the waves. Yeah, what's it like filming? I'm in the water, you know? He's, he's good. He's He makes it possible. I'm just like, I'm holding him and he'll look at me and I'm like, we're, we're watching daddy. And he's like, this goes back to whatever he's doing. I give her all the props because if it wasn't for her and it wasn't for Drew, this wouldn't be possible for me. On the other side, like my friend Drew Heald, he is a Coast Guard and I told him, when you have time, there's no pressure, there's no obligation to be here at this time whenever I call you. Like, In the summertime when the waves are down, I'm doing a lot of surf lessons and sharing with the kids. And so my surf academy is called Shado P LLC Surf Academy. I don't want to like have this McDonald's type of thing where it's like come and go and like give them a lesson and okay, see you later. Like I like to give more time and um, I'll meet up earlier with them and we'll check a few spots. You know, it's cool to be able to just stoke these people out. And I'm like, I walk away from that. I'm like, dude, this is better than my job. Like, this is the job that I really love the most. I'm grateful to be a part of that family with Eric. He's, yeah, he's a great guy. He's a father. You know, he's like a father of mine. And Eric is so cool. He's like, he's like such a perfectionist. Like, he relates surfing to like 
race car drivers. You know, he's like, me and my driver worked all these years to like build this car and then all of a sudden I just get a new driver come in and I give them my perfectly made car and then I go race them on the track. That's how he sees his boards, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, I just want to work on my team and like, oh, his NASCAR team is pretty souped up, huh? <laughs> he's got Benji Brand, um, we got Jack Robinson. I'm gonna grab these two right here behind my truck. I broke my board, so Eric came in and this is like a off the rack that came into like my dimensions and it works amazing. It's a 6'6 by 18.65, 2.38. I was kind of looking at Eric and like, oh, it's, I don't know, it's kind of big, you know? And he was like, no, 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 it's okay, just, just try it. It looks like it'll be a good board for you. And I'm like, okay, I take his advice, you know, rather than mine. And then I go ride it. And I've been riding it and it's, it works in all conditions. Yeah, I haven't ridden this board too much yet. Just waiting for a big day at Pipe. This is a 6.9 with, with my Ali E on top that Danielle hooked me up with. It's King Kamehameha. She was like, well, we should put the king on there. Take him out to get barreled at pipe. And I'm like, oh, that's right. Just waiting for a big day. Like, when, when, when the time's right, we'll bust it out. We want to check out your art studio, the art of Danielle Zerk. There's like a lot of meaning behind a lot of these paintings, you know? She was working um, with Vans. Yeah, she did these live at the event last year. I think it was at Sunset. She worked with HIC scaffolding, was wrapped with her art and the Triple Crown. And she did the Princess Ka Iolani. It's like Danielle's masterpiece. And then she did that of me like a while back. That's all we've got for this week. Things are going to get heated in the next couple of weeks. The deadline, what's the deadline? I don't I actually know what it 19th. is. 19th. I don't know. Or is it the 15th? I don't know. I'm just going to pretend, I'm just going to dub it in the later. Deadline. I'm just going to, the deadline for this thing is the... The 15th of January. And so we haven't got long now for surfaces to submit their ways and it's going to get heated in the next couple of weeks. Would you guys like to have a go of being overdubbed? What's overdub? You know, like the Kung Fu movie? Yeah, so no all you have idea. to do is go like this. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> oh. <How's your> 